enough small talk. Our mask this week here in the Mask Fan Attic is a great one from the glory days of Don Post Studios. It's a little, uh, homely little guy called the 905 Alien. Now, why do I call him the 905 Alien, you're asking? Now, you may have guessed already that I'm calling him 905 because that's the family name. His first name's 9, his last name is 05, his daddy was the famous Alberto V05. That's not really the case. That would be an incorrect assumption on your part. Actually, I call him the 905 Alien because 905 was his item number, his stock number, uh, in the Down Post catalog for some years in the late 70s. Now this guy actually first came out in 1976 I believe and at that time Don Post Studios didn't have a series of masks they were calling the 900 series or the 900 line yet. So uh, originally he was just the, uh, the, the MC-15 alien. So had they not uh, later come up with uh, the, the, 90, the 900 series in 77, when that first happened, we'd be calling him MC-15 all these years, you see. Uh, and, and MC-15, that of course goes back to uh, his, his days as a DJ. Pretty sure that was his DJ name. You know, he was going around all the best clubs, making the circuit. He would, he would say, he would show up at the parties and the raves out in space and, and, and all over the disco planet and he would say, MC-15 is in the house! Yeah, although when he said it, with his vocal apparatus being what it is, it probably sounded more like, because that's kind of how I imagine he would, he says he doesn't really sound like that, sorry. Just a joke, some aliens can't take a joke, you know. Anyway, uh, you remember the disco planet, don't you? The Disco Planet? Sure. If, if you're not familiar with the Disco Planet, I have a scale model that I borrowed from uh, the Extra Galactic Astronomy Department, or EGAD. Now see, this is a scale model of the Disco Planet, and it's very beautiful when viewed from out in space, you see, because as the planet rotates on its axis, it... it yeah, okay, let's get back to... The reason I started calling him by his uh, stock number of 905 is that there were a bunch of different masks called simply Alien and I had a few others called Alien and there had to be some way to differentiate him to specify that you were talking about this guy so uh, in the interest of that specificity it, it became prudent to say uh, give me the 905 Alien or I'm wearing the 905 Alien tonight at the haunted houses and other spooky events and uh, costumey related things that I did back when I was still living, you see. So, so that people would know what I was talking about, I would say, yeah, the 905 alien. And we all called him 905, just like that was his name. But it wasn't. He's really just alien. Now, some people thought he was from Star Trek, and I think the reason they may have thought that is because the catalog photos, the early ones, looked a lot like some of the catalog pages for Don Post Studios. Uh, Star Trek mask. So maybe that kind of got mixed up in people's heads when they saw or when they remembered catalog pictures they had seen somewhere and maybe they thought he was from Star Trek because of those the similarity of the catalog page photos but he doesn't actually appear on Star Trek. However, even though he's not a Star Trek alien, he did show up on television at least once that I can think of in an episode of the TV series Logan's Run that ran from 1977 to 78. And uh, not many people remember that series, but I picked it up on uh, DVD not long ago, and I actually liked it. It's a pretty good show, I thought, especially for late 70s science fiction television. Pretty impressive uh, stuff. But uh, this, this guy uh, turned up, actually two of them. I don't remember the name of the episode, but there was a uh, situation involving um, species of aliens from various planets being uh, locked up in these um, cells. I guess these these structures kind of a Noah's Ark type story where there were different kinds of uh, you know two of each and these guys were in there and in fact if you watch the opening title sequence to the Logan's Run TV series if you don't blink you'll see a couple of uh, these guys right in there because uh, they show up in the opening title sequence very briefly and I believe they had the uh, the feelers removed what are those things well, nobody knows. I've always called them feelers. I've heard them called uh, tendroids and tentacles and antenna and other things with ten in them. But I, I always called them uh, feelers. 
Now this guy was sculpted by none other than the great Bill Malone, the same Bill Malone that directed movies like Parasomnia and the House on Haunted Hill remake, the same Bill Malone that created the Singenor. If you're a, a fan of that monster, you might remember the Singenor. This was one of his creations for Don Poe Studios. Now the first ones were really small and tight and hard to wear, and I know because I had an old one. And if you put this on your head, well, you knew you were going to be in for some hair pulling and a lot of tugging and stretching, and it was going to take a while and, and rip some of your hair out and uh, it'd take a while to get it on. But the payoff was, once you finally got it on, man, it looked terrific. He looked very lifelike. Uh, the eyes, the eye holes would line up with the wearer's eyes, and it just looked very alive and creepy. Now, um, he also was a little bit different color back then. I don't know what this one looks like on your viewing monitor of choice, but I hope it looks like a pale pinkish flesh, kind of a uh, kind of a sickly color, but a, a, a basic uh, pale Caucasian, I guess you'd call it. Uh, the one that I had that was old uh, back in the, uh, the, the, the oldest one that I had back in the 70s was much darker than this. This one, a little bit pale, a little bit pasty. The old ones, some of them almost uh, ruddy, almost swarthy, certainly very tan, as though he'd been having fun in the sun, or suns, depending on his planet of origin. I think, I guess the disco planet would have had multiple suns, wouldn't it? And they'd be like equidistant from the planet, you know, shining on it so that it would get the full effect of all those, uh, the, 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 it would have at least three of them. And then that's why they used to watch that great old television uh, situation comedy on that planet, My Three Sons. But that's another story. Now this guy was in production, as I said, from 1976 through about 1980, at which time he was dropped from the Don Post line, but he made a couple of comebacks beginning in 1986. Is that right? Yep, he says that's correct. Now the 1986 edition uh, was a glow-in-the-dark uh, version. So same character, but instead of the uh, basic skin tone, he had that yellowy, greeny look. <coughs> that glow-in-the-dark stuff has. And there was also an edition around that time in the late 80s that was snow white, just chalk white. And personally, I like the flesh tone version best. There was some variance. Uh, actually, the sculpture is even uh, a little bit varied because this version here is not the original sculpture, which was slightly smaller, uh, but, but almost identical. You can't really tell them apart without really studying tiny details. They're nearly identical. There was some variance, too, in the uh, feelers, if I may call them that. It's, I, I think you can see mine here has a little bit of pink toward the tips. They're a little bit, a little bit red toward the ends. Sometimes that was not the case. A lot of them, they were just the same color as the rest of his skin. Sometimes they had quite a bit of red on them. And sometimes the feelers were more um, curvy than this. Instead of just a, a regular hook shape, sometimes they had an extra... Uh, sort of S-curve in them. And the trouble with finding one of these masks in good shape is that those things tended to come off. They're, they're glued on separately, as you could probably guess. If you ever tried to pull masks out of a mold, you would guess that those uh, three things on his face, onion sprouts, I like to think of them, uh, the onion sprouts are indeed separately cast and glued into the mask. Not badly, not badly. They're actually very well made, very well done, but Masks tend to take a lot of abuse if people wear them. So if your friends at the haunted house or the spook show or the Halloween party or whatever wore your mask of this guy, they might have ripped those things out of there carelessly. They were glued in and uh, you couldn't get replacement ones really. So there are a lot of these floating around that don't have the three facial tentacles going on or at least they might have one or they might have two. But it's hard to find one today that has all of them. But um, what a great mask, I think, a great character, uh, very, very alien and very uh, kind of ahead of his time, you know, kind of, uh, kind of had the look of later movies, later than 1976 or 5 when he was designed and created by the amazing Bill Malone. Now, uh, in the year 2000, a lot of the Don Post older masks from this uh, glory, glorious age of when this guy was around, a lot of those same masks were reissued in what they called the Retro Series in 2000. Retro! But this guy, sadly, was not reissued at that time. However, that same year, 2000, that same year they did uh, release a similar uh, 
character that was an updating of him, and that one was sculpted by Steve Wang, the great effects artist who did all the monsters and creatures for the Giver movies and, and uh, the Gill Man from the Monster Squad and lots of wonderful work from the phenomenally talented um, Steve Wang. Steve Wang did the re-sculpt, which was called Maloney and Alien. Kind of a joke because the first one was by Bill Malone, so then the, re the remake became known as Malonian, yeah. So the Malonian alien, similar to this, but um, significantly different too. He had uh, puffy little squinty eyes, and these uh, feeler tentacle things were uh, pointed more downward rather than straight out. But uh, similar, similar, but significantly redesigned. It wasn't really an exact copy. It was a, a variation on a theme. It was a new version of this kind of character. And that's a nice one too. The sculpture, of course, it's by Steve Wang. You know I like the sculpture. The sculpture is great, but unfortunately the quality on the 2000 edition called Maloney and Alien, not so great. Most of them sort of uh, thin and flimsy and floppy. Not at all like the crazy thick, heavy duty, high quality ones of yesteryear. Now in addition to his charming face, they even came out with hands to go with him, and to this day, the, they're some of my favorite uh, rubber alien hands ever produced. I have a pair that's a bazillion years old. They don't match, okay? The, this pair glows in the dark. This is from the Glow in the Dark edition, but let's hold these up here. As you can see, they're pretty great alien hands. They have only three fingers, and lots of uh, monster hands have done that since then. That was a new innovation at the time for rubber monster hands to be done this way. Two fingers would go in his, uh, his uh, second finger there and it would look for all the world like the wearer had only three fingers and these kind of elongated uh, spooky fingers with the sucker-like tips, which is another great effect that's been done since then on other alien hands, but when this was done, that was pretty fresh, you know? and the big veins on the back. The hands, as I understand it, kind of inspired by the hands of the aliens in um, the old movie, I Married a Monster from Outer Space. Kind of like those hands. Not exactly, just similar to those hands. But uh, great, great hands, and these, of course, were available in all the different colors of the mask. The darker flesh, the lighter flesh, the glow in the dark, and the pasty white uh, colors. But uh, now, you can't find any of this stuff anymore. And the 900 line really was some of my favorite mask designs of all time. So um, I, I hope someday we will see them resurrected again by somebody somewhere just because they're such cool monsters. And uh, well, maybe eventually I'll end up with a um, pair of hands and, uh, and a head to match. You know, but, but, but maybe not. But uh, anyway, that's all from me and our old friend, the 905 Don Post Alien. Uh, my gosh, he's, he has been around in my life for so long, he, he looks like an old friend by now. Although I can't be sure he feels the same way about me.